Well, we've been using the Impel iSIM platform for a total of four years across two companies, but uh, two years in, our, in, our, in my current company. Or so some of our primary use cases with Impel would be, you know, we have a strong desire to understand who did what, where, when, and why, as I like to say internally. And so the near, the near real time, high fidelity, um, you know, security monitoring capabilities is, is uh, certainly our, our primary use case. Uh, another set of use cases that revolve around um, gaining as much insight from a threat intelligence perspective and being able to correlate that back to an alarm and to do so in an automated fashion. Uh, another set of use cases were centered around the automated mitigation capability. And of course, another group of use cases is around uh, the, anal the general reporting and analytics uh, within the platform. So, you know, Dolly Financial Solutions is, in fact, in the financial services industry, or we would say uh, are as the majority of services that we offer being financial services centric. So we, we actually operate or support um, almost every industry in the marketplace. And so, you know, we store, process and transmit uh, highly sensitive information. Um, sometimes that information is pre-market. Uh, other times that information is personal identifiable information. Other times that information is personal health information, et cetera, depending again upon our client requirements. And so security is is, uh, is cornerstone in all we do. It's in our DNA, as we, we like to say internally. Uh, and so being in a position to understand um, you know, when we are at risk of cyber attack is obviously paramount. The features of the of Impel that we find most valuable would be a couple. Uh, first would be the automated mitigation capability. Uh, second would be, as I view it, to be a next generation capability of the attack replay. Um, just kind of walking back from the event um, you know, historically to really provide that visualized uh, representation of the attack lifecycle. Another would be the ability to rapidly deploy um, a comprehensive coverage tool without the need to spend months and months um, planning for a deployment with such emphasis placed on correlation rules. Uh, and the alike, you know, the the ability to put aside the need for a high number of correlation rules is extremely um, advantageous to us. It saves time, saves money, drives fidelity, uh, scores higher. It's just a, it's a fantastic. Thing. You know, the power of the AI and and the uh, natural language processing capability is, in my mind, best measured by the outputs, right? The the fidelity of the alarms that we receive. It's just night and day to be quite transparent as compared to SIM platforms and other platforms we've used in the past. I also feel that, you know, that's probably a, um, a major, the probably leading reason why our overall alarm volume is significantly lower. You know, we, we deal with far, far less um, you know, alert fatigue, as they'd say. We deal with a lot less false positives as a direct result. AI and NLP capabilities. I can share that our overall false positive rates are you know, significantly less. Um, it's definitely the left, it's definitely removed about 60% of the total volume of alarms that um, that we have need to respond to each month over the last year. Also, it's worth mentioning that we like to tell ourselves at least that we spend considerable amounts of time uh, in the years past focusing on managing these correlation rules to ensure that we have the, the right prioritization applied to those rules that the rules were accounted for or took into account our technology deployments and just generally uh, our shift in our um, in our portfolio um, adding removing devices um, retiring you know products and services adding new uh, innovative solutions and such for our customers um, to the extent that we have a 90 minute session twice a month with a partner of ours dedicated to just that session and today we don't have any meetings per month we're focused on correlation uh, rules and we were able to avoid sick headcount when we fired our Q theater uh, as a direct result of transition end. So it's really twofold. So when I think about the dashboard and the quality of the dashboard, I think it's one of the uh, the features that is just uh, it's just fantastic to, to speak about. So if you're able to design, design, a, design a dashboard that will see so, I can get a quick snapshot to either you know broad lens over the last seven, 10 days, uh, much less diving, diving in uh, a little bit more specifically on the event of concern. Um, but also from an analyst perspective, our, our SOC analyst, you know, of course we have, you know, many levels within the SOC uh, security operations organization. And so whether an entry level, new hire, 
Um, you know, they're able to find that right altitude that's of interest relative to the depth of detail that's being presented. Um, so that's one, I think it's very much fantastic, the flexibility of the dashboard to quickly uh, drill up or, uh, or drill down into an altitude of your choosing. And then also being able to, to pivot around between the various data sets of whether it be threat intelligence centric data, alarm data specific asset, elevating it to a, to a solution level, elevating it to an entity level, just the degree of flexibility and speed to which you can change their, your view is very impressive. And it is um, oftentimes on some of the more like, you know, his legacy sims that have been in the market for a long time. That was one of the major pain, pain points is being able to, the, the time it took to refresh those views could be frustrating. The uh, limitations of the flexibility as I described uh, was frustrating. The integration between Elastic and Impal has been quite impressive uh, for a couple of the reasons. I'd say, A, we're a prime example of uh, an organization that must have you know, high degree of flexibility in our deployments. We have uh, full cloud native deployments of products. We have full uh, cloud native deployments of corporate systems. And of course we have on-prem deployments of both. Um, our cloud deployments span many cloud providers. And so you know, I need to be able to orchestrate um, and, and scale up and scale down my footprint, depending on geography, depending on cloud uh, providers, uh, depending on the tempo of the business relative to life cycles of some of our products and in the, in, and so on and so forth. So having a lot of leverage to pull, um, that Elasticsearch really um, has proven to be very, very uh, you know, attractive to us for, for supporting that requirement, the set of requirements of flexibility. Um, and then the, um, I think they play a big role in, in, in really making it so incredibly easy to plug into other security tools, other network uh, platforms, other you know, application pr platforms, whether internally developed or otherwise, our commercial offerings. Now the the API model that, that the Intel product provides really has simplified uh, the integration of almost any technology into their product line. We have a significantly higher confidence um, in our ability to automate mitigations, and we've been um, you know we've we've had technologies across SOAR, across cyber threat intelligence uh, integrated into our platforms for over four years now. And so we'd like to tell ourselves at least that we, uh, we, we're we reasonably experienced you know, with both of those uh, the shown technology categories. And the one of the most impressive accomplishments we were able to showcase internally was building metrics around the fidelity of our playbooks when they're executed, that we have high degree of confidence that we have the right playbooks in place. And it's also worth mentioning that we're a global organization. We are corporate focused primarily, not consumer focused. And so we, we know where our clients are, generally speaking, from a geographic perspective as an example, but our clients travel, right? So we, we want to be hyper conservative on those mitigation techniques as not to adverse, adversely affect the client experience uh, with our product lines. Uh, and I was quite surprised that uh, even though we took a very conservative approach initially, uh, the degree of accuracy, the, the percentages of false positive being almost zero, when those, those mitigation playbooks were invoked. And so to distill it down, the, the enablement of automated mitigations that the Impal product line has provided us has just been incredibly impressive. So the Impal product line, um, one of the most impressive capabilities to our security analyst team is just how little uh, may required to ensure that we're focusing in on the right threats that uh, so the correlation rules themselves um, require effectively little to no maintenance from a compliant perspective, which is tremendous. Uh, leaps forward um, as compared to other product lines and of course um, SIMS of the, of, over the last 10 years. That has that correlation rules maintenance has been one of the most uh, time consuming uh, bodies of work that was required. And one of the areas where you had an you know, a high degree of risk of focusing in the wrong areas, right? You, we spent an enormous amount of time um, being hyper-focused on ensuring that we had the, the right correlation rules in place, that the, the fidelity of those rules was sound, um, et cetera. Um, and we just can't begin to um, mention just how pleased we are that you know, for the most part, that's not no longer something we have to be concerned about. We are saving so very much time. Um, we deal with billions of events a month. 
We are definitely a data centric organization and easily we, uh, I would say that we are able to save 75% of the headcount for security operations that would otherwise be needed given our scale. Now we're in a bit of a unique situation where Donna Financial Solutions been on the, is, um, you know, was a spinoff from R. Donnelly uh, just shy of four years ago. So we're still in a growth mode in many respects. And so while we are still continuing to expand our security uh, organization from an FTE and uh, just generally speaking, a headcount perspective, um, it's very easy to quantify that without how we'd be looking at seven to 10 more resources being required as opposed to the one or two that we have focused on the platform today. And focus on the platform includes capacity management, uh, general system administration of the environment, and of course, uh, monitoring and responding to the alarms that are generated. We are, and I'm in a unique position wherein we've been growing the security organization quite rapidly over the last three and a half years, um, but as a direct result of the Impel, the transition and the legacy uh, collection of tools uh, towards the Impel platform, we've been able to, to keep that headcount flat. flat. Um, and we've been able to redirect a lot of their time away from the wash, rinse, repeat uh, activities of responding to um, alarms at where we, we have a high degree of confidence going to be a false positive, adjusting the rules accordingly, right? And that can really uh, be a bit uh, frustrating for the analysts when they have to spend hours and hours a day dealing with those types of uh, probable false positives. And so it really has helped not only us uh, keep our headcount flat relative to the resources necessary to, to provide the assurances uh, that they, our executive team expects of us uh, for monitoring, um, but it allows us to be uh, to enjoy, uh, at least the analyst team, the feedback I get is that they they will spend the majority of their time doing what they love, right? Which is going after, um, you know, having higher degree of confidence, I should say, that where they're spending their time is meaningful. You know, they enjoy um, getting into the incident response type activity. The ability for MPAL to be managed by a single analyst, um, it really depends on the organization. I, I can tell you that I don't need a team of 20, 25 analysts any longer. Um, it's significantly less than that. And now, can, to quantify one analyst, it really depends on the organization. It depends on you know, what is your threshold for, for risk. Um, of course, that's unique to every organization. What is the size of, your, of the organization from a, a technology perspective? Are you dealing with hundreds of servers? Are you dealing with tens of thousands of servers? Of course, that just kind of be indicative of your resource needs. But I would support um, you know, the, the statement that it takes um, essentially one maybe two resources, regardless of your size, to directly support the care and feeding, capacity management, you know, monitoring, um, so on and so forth of the Intel platform. It's just the simplicity of the architecture is just remarkably impressive. Intel has, you know, impacted our network security posture in a fairly dramatic way, particularly in so much that we have a higher confidence that when we are responding to an event, it's, a, it's an event that is, uh, is actionable. It's an, an event we should be concerned about. Um, secondly, it's impact, it's positively impacted our network security posture through by way of the automated mitigations that are defined within the system. And so the while the count of attacks, um, you know, are really, let me understate this a bit. The playbooks def, uh, that we define, we take a conservative approach to that as to avoid the negative impact to our clients. Um, but the accuracy of those playbook uh, defined automated mitigations, we have tremendous amount of confidence in them. And we, those playbooks, you know, are triggered daily. And uh, you know, we, that just it reduces risk. It reduces the amount of time spent um, addressing the, to contain those risks, to mitigate those risks. So from an overall uh, security perspective, it's, it's dramatically, um, you know, in steps forward, I should say, has been quite dramatic. But also, it directly supports our compliance programs. Um, we're very easily able to measure um, when we have events and what actions were taken, because uh, you know, the vast majority of them are actually addressed in automation. Impel has a few areas of improvement, as with any other technology. Uh, I think a couple of them that are top of mind would be you know, continuing to drive innovation um, in the in the dashboard. Um, while uh, we've been extremely uh, impressed with the ease of use and the flexibility of being able to drill down deeply and focusing very intently on an area of interest. Uh, I think there's always going to be opportunities to be more innovative, to open up that dashboard to more and more wider audience than um, just the security operations group, for example. And similarly with reporting, 
you know, there's always a desire to have custom reporting for probably each and every client uh, of the of Intel. Uh, and then also relative to keeping up with the sheer pace of the cloud uh, NATO technologies, um, you know, providing more and more options for clients to deploy their technologies in unique ways, you know, I think is another area that I recommend. Yeah, okay, Intel has been able to reduce the time that we spend on just maintaining the platform um, significantly, you know, particularly as compared to uh, two other product lines that we've previously invested in. I'd say the biggest advantage in that regard would be the lack of um, time spent on managing the correlation rules. The, uh, simplification, the simplified architecture allows us to really lean upon Impal support teams to effectively provide almost end-to-end -end support of the underlying infrastructure that um, you know, comprises the platform. North of 75% um, of our time um, has been reduced relative to supporting the environment, everything from the General System Administration, Capacity Management, the um, overall patching and and uh, the system admin of the ecosystem has been reduced, but I'd say most notably would be on the time maintaining the application tier of Impal, particularly that of the correlation rules. And that has been reduced by more than 90% as compared to other platforms. Their ability to, to focus on the event with a high degree of fidelity really uh, drives our level of confidence. Um, so that, uh, in so much, the net result of that is, is when we do receive alarms, we are quick to respond with a high degree of urgency because we, we recognize that the, there's a very high probability that the alarm is accurate, right? That the fidelity is very, very high. Um, so it uh, enables us to focus in other areas throughout the day, but once uh, we do receive an alarm from Intel, we do recognize it's uh, something that we need to respond to very, uh, with a high degree of urgency. The platform has made mitigation faster primarily by way of the playbooks that we had defined for that automated mitigation. We have a number of, for example, we have a number of playbooks that are defined in our Impel platform signals directly to the firewall to block traffic. For example, we have no customers in North Korea. And so anytime we see an inter interrogation of our products or generally speaking any of our assets, uh, we signal to the firewall and just drop that traffic systematically with saves time, um, not just in the form of mean time to respond to an event, but really you know, time relative to our analyst being able to focus in more in other areas. Medication time has been reduced by, I'd estimate, north of 75% uh, for the vast majority of alarms that we receive. Of course, that varies depending on the event type. Um, but between the automated playbooks that have, we have defined and the confidence level, as I mentioned, um, in the fidelity of alarms, um, we, we, we've just been able to enjoy a significant reduction in not just the mean time to mitigate, but also our mean time to respond. So the, the partnership between Impel and Elasticsearch um, really has a very positive impact on us you know, from a couple of different angles. First would be support. There's one, one throat to choke, right? We pick up the phone, we reach out to the Impel team and whether we're experiencing an application issue, a, a data issue, or, or whatever the issue may be, we have one uh, point of contact and that really just simplifies the, the overall management. Secondly would be the licensing. Um, negotiating through one one organization is obviously, uh, I should say obviously, but it's quite quite more simplified. And then, of course, um, as it relates to preparing for major upgrades, uh, the fewer parties that we have to interface with just makes our lives quite a bit easier. I'd say the partnership between Impound and Elastic really uh, has a couple of key benefits. Uh, first would be you know, the simplification. Uh, we have one point of contact for support, you know, regardless of what the issue type is. If, you're, if we're experiencing a concern relative to the you know, the application, the UI, uh, the reporting engines, whatever that might be, um, we have one phone number to call, one, one lead engineer to reach out to. Um, and they take ownership relative to uh, determining if it's an internal impound matter or if we need to reach out across the boundaries, if you would, over to Elastic. Secondly, would be with, as it relates to, we plan for upgrades or expansion of the environment for capacity management purposes, whatever the issue may be, um, having that simplified licensing arrangement uh, certainly makes my life easier. Uh, as we have one agreement, we have one uh, pricing skew to work from. Uh, it just really good. Keeps, it, keeps it nice and simple for the business side of ma or to maintain the business. And then I guess lastly is as we look forward to um, you know, future product lines and uh, other architectural endeavors, um, you know, just having you know, a single point of contact 
for planning purposes as we look to year two, year three, um, it just is going to make my life uh, simplify the process quite a bit. So we did as part of the, uh, the selection criteria. As I mentioned, I had worked with MPAL uh, in a previous for a previous organization, but our requirements were very different. Um, so we're definitely enterprise focused, but uh, but we are also corporate uh, user focused. Our client community is primarily that of uh, mid to large enterprise organizations across the globe. And so we uh, and how well an or a product organization or in the services team responds in the in the support calls is. It's critically important. So, I give them a lot of very high marks. The responsiveness has been very high, but I think more important to the responsiveness is the quality and the accuracy of their recommended next steps to resolve whichever issues we may have. And then, lastly, I'd like to give them a, a bit of a shout out for when they have given me commitments around enhancements, uh, such as you know, in enhancing the reporting capabilities, some minor adjustments to the dashboard, uh, and those types of feature requests. Um, you know, they've. they've They've met those commitments as it relates to quality and timeline. There is complexity uh, to the initial deployment in so much that we were migrating from an existing uh, fairly sizable deployment of another product line. And, and actually, there's a couple of different uh, solutions in place that made up, you know, kind of comprise our overall enterprise security monitoring uh, solution. We had the SIM, we had our SOAR platform, we had cyber threat intelligence. Um, interface from a number of different feeds, etc. And so there was some complexity that both um, several of my teams and of course the Impal team needed to uh, walk through and, and make sure we mutually understand, understood the goal, the technical requirements. Um, there were some business requirements about the reporting that we wanted to make sure we were all aligned to. Um, so there's while there was complexities, um, I also would give them a very, um, very favorable feedback as it relates to them taking a sense of ownership to the migration and the overall deployment of their technology um, and really looking out for us. There's a number of times they cautioned me uh, to make some minor adjustments in the plan to ensure that they were disruptive to our business, so which I'm, you know, I'm very appreciative of. So our overall implementation strategy really was um, bringing both MPAL and members of my um, representatives from my teams together um, to build a, a plan. Right? So we, we established a few key milestones uh, aligned to uh, those milestones relative to availability of resources on both sides and, and ensuring that we really understood what we're trying to accomplish, not just from an architect's perspective, but also, for example, taking into account key business timelines that we need to be mindful of where we just didn't have an appetite for some uh, major change management activities to occur. And so that we each brought for product ma or project management resources uh, to the table. We each brought a lead architect to the table uh, and we each brought uh, threat analysts to the table to ensure that we understood each of those uh, perspectives to really comprise that that team and, and, and uh, ensure they were better for us. I would estimate we a total team makeup, excluding myself, um, would be six, um, two from MPAL and four from my team. The initial deployment uh, took just a couple of weeks, and then most of that was planning. The actual technical activities are fairly uh, executed quite quickly. And of course, then there is the migration of the primary existing data store that you need to migrate from your old SIM environment. There's also the uh, body of work to um, redirect log streams, redirect other you know, ingestion of data um, from a large hundreds and really for us several thousand devices, uh, north of 5,000 devices, um, just for production alone. And so of course that takes time. And so the Primary migrate deployment was just a couple of weeks. Most of that would be in planning. The primary migration of the uh, existing data stores took, uh, I'd estimate, about 14 days for to go through three or four different change windows to make sure that that was complete. And, and, and just to wrap up some other technical activities. And then the effort to um, integrate, to redirect all the various log streams into the Impal environment away from a multi tiered architecture to a, to a single. Uh, destination IP address, just a single collector across the environments took approximately two months. But again, that was more on um, making sure that we understood the risk associated with um, change management collisions and, and ensuring that we were hyper focused on uh, never losing a pack, never losing a log through those migrations.
So we have one dedicated resource that's accountable for ensuring that the MPAL environment is healthy. So one from a maintaining perspective. Um, we have uh, a team of threat analysts on staff and we have a third party um, managed security services partnership in place as well. So it's difficult to answer directly as it relates to maintaining, um, but there's definitely one FTE that whose primary role is to ensure that the um, MPAL platform is is up and running and healthy and satisfying the needs of our internal clients, which would be our um, our team of cyber threat analysts. So I found the stability of Impel to be, uh, you know, quite honestly, uh, and I don't want to jinx myself, so I'm going to knock on some wood here if you would, but uh, we haven't had any stability challenges yet. And of course, that is uh, directly attributable to the architecture that we put in place and, and, and for Impel and other solutions that we deploy, you know, we, we certainly plan for highly available solutions um, across each uh, deployment site or per data center and the geo redundancies available but uh, so far so good we've, had, we've not had any uh, insignificant operational hiccups with the platform the scalability of impel i believe is endless um, i feel that they have a uh, an architecture and, and that is uh, highly scalable it's been proven uh, for both on-prem cloud and hybrid environments so uh, which is reflect what we we presently have right is a hybrid you know, environment here at Decent, but um, they've, uh, I suspect they can scale to the, to almost any, any size needed. And the question would be is, uh, what are the needs of the unique, you know, the unique needs of the organization, what are being deployed, and you know, what is their appetite for uh, investing to ensure resiliency, either locally, regionally, or globally. And so, um, of course, those things play a role in, in uh, you know, how quickly and how complex uh, the architecture must be in order to scale, but I think it, I would suggest it's infinite. Impal, without a doubt, is the most important monitoring tool that we have at our disposal. It, uh, it is also worth mentioning we were able to retire two other um, tool platforms and as part of that migration over in time. You know, I would uh, be remiss to even attempt to say that um, it's, you know, it's more, it has a higher priority than that of, say, our, our mitigating technologies like firewalls and, and IPSs and the alliance, but from a, from, a, from a monitoring and from an incident response perspective, there's not a doubt about it, Intel is the, is the, is the most viable asset we have in our toolkit. It's, uh, it is the, the standard for security operations, so anywhere my organization deploys technology assets, Intel will be providing coverage, if not already. So we have, um, we had retired, I should say, we retired the, a legacy SIM deployment that we had in place for nearly four years. Um, I don't want to say the, the name of the provider out of respect. They have a great product, but I just feel that, um, you know, the Impel has uh, demonstrated more innovation uh, at a lower cost point uh, with, a, with a simplified architecture that's more extensible and more easily to scale. And so uh, we were able to retire the, the SIM that we had in place for three and a half years, as well as our SOAR platform. We continue to use our existing cyber threat intelligence um, platform, um, but the and there is an overlap with the capabilities across Impal, but we still see a value in that CTI platform. So we retired the SOAR and we retired our legacy SIM. We came to a realization that we needed to make a change in large part because of the, our, the cost of scaling uh, was becoming uh, quite concerning. Um, secondly, the um, we went through a series of upgrades um, a little over a year ago that was that was problematic. Um, and so anytime we experience something that's impactful, uh, we want to pause and, and, and reflect back what we did well and what our opportunities um, were. And did we miss any opportunities to avoid that situation from uh, being realized? And so we uh, used that the, the, the outcomes of those reflections to revisit the market and, um, and made the decision to to really pursue Impel as our as our lead solution for security operations. We did, as we do with almost every technology selection, we, we look at the market. We, um, we for this particular uh, technology stack, there were five or six different players that we looked at intently. Um, and then as with most organizations, we take that broader view, we narrow it down to two, usually three finalists, go into a formalized proof of concept lab environment, run that for an extended period of time when it was something so critical as a SIM, uh, as a SOAR, um, you know, your primary reporting capabilities for security purposes. Um, so we, we had an extended evaluation and we followed that crawl walk before we even consider running model relative to uh, our, our, our rollout, our migrations, um, ultimately towards Impal. And um, you know, 
So I, I like to think that in, in hindsight, it was a very structured, very formalized process. And what was interesting, um, the business case was very simple because the cost savings from just the just the cost of avoidance, uh, the as we look forward in our plans and the need to scale up, um, more than covered the cost of transitioning in our entirety. So some of the other the SIM providers that we looked at uh, when we revisited the market uh, would include Logarithm, Splunk, Empow, um, to name a few. I'd say that you know some of the pros would be the simplified licensing model, uh, certainly. Um, both organizations have had feedback over the years from many, many clients that that's an area of concern. Particularly that with, with Splunk, I think it's well known um, that that's an area of concern for many, many organizations. I would also say that the simplified architecture, particularly leveraging the Elasticsearch technologies, um, really prevents um, the need to have a complex architecture with you know, uh, high power CPUs in place across, you know, each of your your footprints where you have log collectors, for example, deployed. So that uh, was a major, uh, major value add and was very, very attractive to us. And then as it relates to the, the SOAR side of the toolkit, there was no need to purchase an independent SOAR platform. You know, the, the, tech, the innovation that Impel, uh, you know, brings to the market just you know, mitigated all of our and go address all those use cases um, natively, and so we were able to just completely retire that you know, that toolkit completely out of our environment. The decision to partner with Elastic and to, for that strategic partnership to be in place wasn't the you know, wasn't a tier one criteria for us. But what was was the outcomes and capabilities that that partnership has resulted in. For example, the the speed to rapidly scale up, the ease of scaling down the ease of migrating from, say, a primary on-prem data center strategy to a hybrid, almost 50-50 cloud on-prem strategy with long-term plans of pursuing cloud far more aggressively. Um, and so as we need to pull the levers to keep up with the demands of our business, we wanted to have comfort that it would be, it would not be a disruptive um, series of changes as it relates to the SIM, that we wouldn't need to go back and be architect and buy additional licenses for new features and functionalities. And so we certainly want to avoid that complex license structure. We want to have confidence of our ability to scale up and scale down and to migrate from across multiple feeders uh, as our business needs warrant and then help them great job in, in supporting us. In that regard. So we evaluate the you know that partnership between Impal and Elastic in a couple of different from a couple of different dimensions. First and foremost, what was our experience like as we were negotiating? Um, was Impel, you know, in a position to adequately represent um, both the business terms for Elastic and support terms and, and other commitments that we needed to, to work through? And the answer was yes. They did. It, it felt very seamless to us. And secondly, of course, is the simplicity, as I mentioned, the simplicity of the licensing model um, just made that process of acquiring the technology, you know, so much more simple and straightforward than, um, than what we experienced in the, the previous relationships that were in place. So it, I don't want to go into specifics on the, the exact dollar amounts, but I'll share this, that we were looking at seven-figure investment being necessary to sustain our growth projections for our log ingestion requirements just for production. And we had a goal of ensuring that we understand who did what, where, when, and why across all assets, production, staging, development, you know, field devices, laptops, iPads, etc. And not only were we able to avoid all those costs relative to growth from a point in time forward, of course, um, the cost structure of Impal as compared to the existing run rate for both existing tools um, was cheap. It was cheaper for us to migrate towards Impal than it was to sustain on our legacy platform. And so when it's cheaper to Migrate, obviously, that's very attractive. That's not the, you know, that is complete the full, um, you know, there's more to that puzzle. And so, one of the, as we have more alarms, as a result of having more logs adjusted, of course, that means we have need more analysts to respond to those alarms in order for us to meet our SLAs. And we have very aggressive SLAs because, again, securities in our DNA, we take it very seriously. And so, with a higher degree of fidelity in the alarms, we're able to reduce our to really avoid adding additional resources to our teams, and so we take into account the cost of security resources in today's market. We take into account the 
significantly higher fidelity in, in the alarms that are um, being generated from the platform. It drove down our costs with our SSP. It drove down my costs with human capital um, internally. Uh, it drove down our, our need to have multiple resources supporting the, the underlying infrastructure and, and uh, health and maintenance of, of MPAL as a, as, a, as a platform, you know, from uh, several resources down to one. And so your human capital costs were significantly reduced. Our operating expenses were significantly reduced. Our capital costs were significantly reduced while tripling our capacity um, and yet running our run rate reducing. It was just a, almost a too good to be true situation, but uh, fortunately for us, uh, it worked out very nicely. The biggest lesson I've learned from using MPAL would be just how, just how far um, the technology has come has surprised me relative to orchestrating orchestration of the automation of our mitigation. That's one that was quite surprising. The accuracy, the level of confidence I have in those playbooks surprises me at how high, how much confidence I, I, I would have, uh, and it's quite high. The Another area that surprised me would be the level of confidence that we have now in our ability to scale up and scale down, and scaling down sometimes can be equally as tricky. And then I don't have to put up with any longer these hyper complex licensing agreements every time i want to add some additional reporting you know as a compliance centric or a, a a regulatory specific gdpr or pci or sarbanes oxy whatever reporting package there's an additional license for that for many of the same providers today which is to me just felt a little bit ridiculous and so the simplified lock licensing licensing architecture there was no hidden um, gotchas down the road with MPAL, and I have experienced that with other SIM providers that I've worked with in the past. The advice that I would give to anyone looking at MPAL would be primarily ensuring that your planning is sound. I know that I, um, you know, I'm very favorable of our, when I think about our experiences with MPAL, um, it's, it, it's just, it's refreshing uh, to think back about, um, you know, how easy that journey was, such a difficult technology stack. Um, and not only was it was it surprisingly simple, it should not have been, and just not long ago, given we were not standing up a deployment of a net new um, sim environment, right? We were needing to build and deploy, um, and then migrate a very sizable deployment to this new ecosystem. And, and inevitably, we expect there to be some bumps along the road, and there were very, very few. So in, in short, I attribute that back to the quality of planning. Um, and the reliability of the technology that MPAL brings to the table. So my advice would be ensure that your planning is sound. While it's exciting to know that the technology is very stable, it's exciting to know that the integrations are, are very straightforward with, with API-driven integrations uh, that, you know, that they never can really take into full account the uniqueness of your business and therefore planning is absolutely paramount. If I was to rate MPAL on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give them a 9.5 probably and and why it's so high is that there's no competitors on the market in my mind that have really done um, that really transformed the sim industry as much as MPAL has and it's impressive the speed to which they continue to innovate you know every couple of months we're excited to learn about the latest and greatest capabilities of the platform and most of the latest uh, innovations of late have been centered around their automation capability it's just been uh, such a tremendous impact um, on my organization to focus on what matters uh, and to have high confidence that where we are spending our time, uh, it, that it, it, it's worth doing so. The, the alert fatigue, the, um, the, the false positive rates have just plummeted. Um, so it's, it's just really exciting. Uh, they, have, they have, in my mind, they're transforming the industry uh, in a manner that no one would have expected, quite frankly. Uh, 